Let's talk about a really important model for educators called TPAC. Hi, I'm TPOP, a science teacher at Centennial High School. I'm also an education technology enthusiast. I want to relate to you my first experience hired on at Centennial High School. This is the classroom as I entered in it for the first time. Now, there wasn't very many things on the wall. It was a brand new experience for me. Not only that, I was hired to teach a content area I wasn't all too familiar with. Even though I graduated in biology, I was asked to teach physical science, astronomy, and science support. I was struggling with one of the very first domains of TPAC, and that's content knowledge. That's the teacher's knowledge of the subject matter. Now, luckily, I did have some fields of study from the university I went to, but other resources I could use would be the state standards, which let me know exactly the expectations that are needed for students in order to pass a subject. Now, my group also had learning targets and priority standards we want students to do that align with the state standards. The last part of content knowledge in this domain is also a long, lo lifelong pursuit of learning. This is something that you're going to learn, you take a passion for, and you learn over time. Now, fast forward to the next year, I had a good year under my belt, and I was teaching students the same subject, and I found that students were struggling in areas where previously they didn't struggle. And what I found out was that I needed to increase my pedagogy knowledge. Now, pedagogy knowledge is the teacher's knowledge of various methods of teaching and instructional strategies. Some of the resources listed here is Wicker Strategies. Wicker is from the AVID Foundation, and it stands for Writing, Inquiry, Collaboration, Organization, and Reading. Now, having these various ideas behind the methods of teaching and instruction, writing could be uh, providing students stenses, structures, or starters. Inquiry could be teaching students how to ask questions or asking essential questions within each subject matter. Collaboration could be such things as think, pair, shares, or peer teaching. Organization could be teaching them about Cornell notes, organizing their binder or interactive notebooks. And reading strategies could be marking the text. On top of that, access and equity are important to consider for the various teaching and instructional strategies that you do. Later on, I was able to obtain a technology grant. I really wanted to enhance my instruction by incorporating technology, and I was so excited to do so. Unfortunately, I found that it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be, and errors and things started popping up over the place, and maybe I wasn't quite ready to use it. I needed to learn a little bit more. Well, this relates to the third domain of TPAC, and that's technology knowledge the teacher's knowledge of technology and technology resources. Some of the resources behind this are the LMS, the learning management systems. For example, Centennial uses Schoology as its learning managing system. Being familiar with the device policy, whether that be one-to-one -one devices or bring your own device that students are able to bring from home, um, as well as the various operating systems, whether it's Chromium or Chrome OS or Windows or Mac or iPad. There's a lot of different operating systems out there, and having familiar familiarity with that is part of a teacher's technology knowledge. Finally, also the understanding or knowing of the various web tools and applications that exist for students and teachers to use for effective instruction. Now, all three of these main domains come together to make TPAC, the model for teachers. All TPAC is, is the utilization of all these domains by a teacher for effective lesson development and instructions. You might notice within this chart that this Venn diagram has intersecting lines. So let's explore the various intersections. The first intersection I feel like many teachers are used to doing is the pedagogical content knowledge. This is the teacher's knowledge on how to teach the content in a variety of ways. We mentioned Wicker before, reading, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and or writing, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and reading. But other resources could be varying the lesson types, project-based learning, student portfolios, bell ringers, peer teaching, Socratic seminars, and blended learning. All of these are great examples of incorporating pedagogy and content together. Now, an example that I have for you in my class is a learning target portfolio. Students at the beginning of a unit are given a set of learning targets that outlines through ICANN statements and student-friendly language what they need to be able to do. Now, as they go through the unit, they might do assignments or labs. They might explore simulations or online content and collaborate with each other. 
all of these things come back to the learning targets and students are encouraged to fill out the learning target portfolio, which they can then use on an assessment as part of their resources. Another two domains we can intersect is technology and content or technological content knowledge. This is the teacher's knowledge about the variety of technology tools to help them teach the content. We mentioned before the learning management system, but it might be understanding the learning management system's tools, such as discussion boards or class glossaries or blogging. Google Apps has a variety of tools and understanding how to utilize them, as well as all the ins and outs of how they work is also important. Uh, finding and accessing simulations or other videos and things that help students learn the content. And I'm also going to mention the SAMR model here, which is a separate model that go coincides well with TPAC. SAMR stands for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, and Redefinition, and are things to consider when teachers utilize online, online content. My success in TCK examples or technology content examples is the utilization of simulations. I love simulations and I find that they really work well to help students visualize the content and interact with it. Many of the simulations aren't passive. They're able to manipulate the data to explore and apply many modalities of learning when doing so. The last intersections we're going to talk about is the techno technological pedagogical knowledge, the, the interbreed between technology and pedagogy. These are where the teacher's knowledge on how to effectively utilize technology to reach the desired outcome of student achievement and growth. We mentioned the LMS before. It's a great resource to obtain data and, and the tools within them. But there's other things. There's standards-based grading. There's formative and summative assessment data. RTI, which stands for response to intervention. And I'm also going to point here that there are concepts and standards that relate to this as well, besides just tools. The SAMR model we mentioned before, and ISTE standards. Which outline, which outline standards for students and teachers on how to best utilize technology within pedagogy. My success examples with technology pedagogy knowledge is student completion and mastery. Our LMS allows us to track student completion through all the content. So as students turn in work, we can track not just me, but the students themselves, all of the content that they've done and how far they are and how much they're going. This is a great way for response to intervention. We can provide interventions for students who might be falling behind or struggling with certain content, and it provides formative assessments for the students themselves. Another great example is mastery. The LMS allows us to track mastery for various subjects and topics. And we could see overall which, which topics our students are struggling with, both as a group as well as individually. And again, we can provide interventions and help students be the, the best that they can be in the content. So TPAC, again, just to reiterate, is combining all of these things together. It's not that we have to be in the middle of this flowchart at all times. We should be considering each and everything as much as possible and intersections between them. TPAC is really meant to help guide personal and professional development. And it's something that I hope you consider in future lesson plannings and in years to come. Thank you so much for listening. That's all I have for TPAC.